Say Chi Lop is called the king of synthetic drugs. People compare him to El Chapo and Pablo Escobar. But in terms of scale and business acumen, Sechi Lop is much bigger than them. C created and ran a huge multinational drug production and trafficking syndicate with tens of billions of dollars in profits called The Company. It brings together five Asian crime groups and funnels, tons of methamphetamine, heroin, and ketamine around the world. He started with heroin on the streets of New York, but his Asian empire relied on methamphetamine, a highly addictive drug with devastating physical and mental effects on the long-term user. He organized mass production of synthetic drugs in super labs. They often disguised the drug in tea bags. Tsai Lop became the most wanted man in Asia, guarded by Thai kickboxers. He flies private jets, once lost $66 million overnight in a Macau casino. Who is Tsai Lop, and where is he now? His story follows. Tsai Chi Lop was born in 1963 in communist China and emigrated to Canada with his fiancée in 1988 when he was 25. They married there and had two children. His drug career began in the early 1990s when he ran a smuggling network, supplying heroin from the troubled Golden Triangle, where the borders of Myanmar, Thailand, and Laos meet. In the 1980s, New York is awash in heroin. In four or five years, its use doubled. For every 40 New Yorkers, one is a heroin addict. The FBI set up several specialized anti-drug teams. The first thing they notice is that heroin, which used to come from the Middle East and be pale brown, is now pure white and has become known as Chinese white. They track down a group from Detroit who come to New York to buy heroin and arrest the dealer. He takes the heroin from an Italian with ties to the Sicilian mafia, paying him $2,000 for a quantity that at the time was worth 100 grand. This is how the FBI found out that the Chinese are paying the Italians not for the heroin itself, but only for the transportation. But where did the heroin come from? At the same time, Toronto, Canada was also a wash in heroin. The border control between Canada and the U.S. is downright symbolic, and heroin is getting through freely. The new organization that is at the heart of this trafficking is called the Big Circle Boys. They are Chinese with an interesting history. Big Circle Boys were originally special forces of Mao Zedong's Red Army in Communist China. Elite cadres sent to terrorize the population at the slightest resistance to the totalitarian regime. At some point, the Chinese communists realized they had created a powerful political force and sent them to the southern province of Guangzhou for re-education. Their name, the Big Circle Boys, came from the fact that the city of Guangzhou was built around a circle of railroad tracks. The Big Circle Boys felt betrayed by communism and crossed illegally into Hong Kong. In the 1980s, some of the Big Circle Boys emigrated to Canada. They settled in Montreal and Toronto and started at the lowest criminal level, as pickpockets. But almost immediately, they felt that with the wallets they stole, and more specifically the credit cards in them, they could make a lot more money. So they started a massive business mass-producing fake visa cards in China, which they sent all over the world. Loaded with money, they immediately turned to a much more lucrative trade. Heroin. The big boys are smart. Don't beat around the bush, operate in the shadows like ghosts. The Toronto police start following six of the big circle boys around, and one individual stands out from the rest. He is followed by an entourage of five or six younger ones. This shows he has status. Obviously, he's held in high esteem and respect. He's smart. As he drives, he pulls over to the curb to make sure any pursuer will pass him. Twice a week, he takes his men to the range to practice pistol shooting. For months, the police couldn't figure out who this big boy was. Then a name starts coming out of the sources. Chi Chi Lop. And Chi Chi Lop is different. He's very careful about what he says, and he's elusive. He hardly talks on the phone. He just makes appointments. He's inconspicuous and invisible. But behind that exterior, there is a sense of toughness and ruthlessness. At that point, police had no record of him, except that he had been shot in the arm. He had been in the hospital, but disappeared like a ghost. Identifying Lop was one thing, but capturing him was quite another. After searching all his associates in Canada and the US, the police learned from informants that Tsai Lop had gone to China, which was completely disarming because no one had an extradition treaty with the Chinese. So the FBI decides to wait patiently, and when Tsai Chi skips over to Hong Kong, they arrest him with the help of the local police. I was struck by how ordinary he looks, how he can blend in with the crowd. Nothing about him screamed international drug trafficker. He wasn't big or athletic or dressed in elegant clothes. Nothing like that. I told him I'd see him in Brooklyn, and he smiled. In 1998, he was brought to trial in Brooklyn and faced a life sentence. His lawyer petitioned the court asking for leniency. His ailing parents needed constant care, his 12-year-old son had a lung disease. His wife was depressed. In addition, Tsi vowed to open a restaurant if released. 
According to trial notes, Tse expressed great sorrow for his crime. On September 26, 2000, Tse Chi Lop was sentenced to nine years for organized importation of heroin. He was sent to the Federal Correctional Institution in Elkton, Ohio. But apparently during the six years he served of his sentence, he was able to console himself of his great sorrow and gave up the idea of the Chinese restaurant. He was released in 2006 and was under supervision for four years before returning to Canada. According to business records, in 2011, Tse and his wife registered a company called China Peace Investment Group Company, LLTD, in Hong Kong. After disappearing from police radar for several years, he reappeared in Asia. While Tse has been in prison, the drug world where he used to rule has undergone earth-shattering changes. The market was by then dominated by Middle Eastern and Asian heroin, but no longer. Parts of Southeast Asia have gradually become an important hub for synthetic drug production. Their effect is on the central nervous system. Extremely harmful, highly addictive drugs, bringing enormous profits. Police suspect the reformed, jailed Tse simply picked up where he left off, immediately re-establishing his connections in China, Hong Kong, Macau, and the Golden Triangle. His time in prison only whetted his appetite for profits and gave him time to devise a brilliant plan to build a powerful drug empire. In 2013 to 2014, huge quantities of methamphetamines began appearing on the streets of Australia. Customs authorities intercepted small smuggling ships and police seized tons of crystals, indicating that there was a boom in the trade. And it's not just in Australia. It's the same in Japan, Indonesia, Taiwan. Tons of methamphetamines have been seized in cargo ships. But the Australian authorities do not know who is supplying these huge shipments. From informants and overheard conversations, they are beginning to hear the name, The Company. The Company, or as it is later called, the Sam Gore Syndicate was formed when C. Chi Lop managed to convince five gangs to join his cause to make billions from drugs together. They are the Big Circle Gang, Triad 14K, Wu Xing Wu, Sun Yian, and the Bamboo Union. The Sam Gore Syndicate consists of 19 leaders, four Canadian citizens, including Tse. The rest are from Hong Kong, Macau, Thailand, Vietnam, China, and other places. Up to this point, all five criminal gangs are closed societies that rival and kill each other. But the common interest for more profit and Say's glamorous business ideas managed to unite them. We came to uh, understanding that, you know, the best way to kill your enemy is to befriend them. So drugs trafficker and syndicate, they work together. They become friends instead of enemy because all of us you know, have one same vision. In 2011, the Australian police harnessed all their intelligence power to identify the leader of the company. They spotted the existence of a figure nicknamed Brother Three. He becomes the target of several intelligence headquarters. Australian police continue to seize tons of methamphetamines worth tens of millions of dollars. In 2011, Australian federal police officers uncovered a group in Melbourne importing heroin and methamphetamine. The quantities were not large, tens of kilograms. So instead of arresting the Australian drug dealers, the police put them under surveillance, tapped their phones, and monitored them for more than a year. But the police systematically intercept and seize their supplies. Under the syndicate's rules, the damage should be repaid by those who are responsible for the loss. However, the bosses in Hong Kong are getting angry because their other dealers in Australia are selling the drugs without incident. There, Hong Kong police watched the Australian meet two men who were clearly from the Sam Gore syndicate or the company. One is middle-aged, dressed in a sporty manner, with his hair parted and slicked back. No tattoos, no branded clothing. He looks like any other golfer you'd meet on the golf courses of Asia. The typical middle-aged Chinese family man, but it's obvious by his demeanor that he's the big boss. He's identified as Che Chi Lop, who has been convicted and served time for trafficking in drugs. He has based his large-scale production of synthetic drugs on the Golden Triangle, this is the vast and isolated area where the borders of three countries, Myanmar, also known as Burma, Laos, and Thailand, come together. It has long been a hub in the production of opium and now synthetic drugs. Here, Asian criminal networks are forming alliances on the ground with local ethno-separatist and nationalist movements, creating one of the largest lawless regions in the world. Moreover, the meeting of the three borders makes the place very convenient for drug trafficking. It is an isolated territory virtually ruled by private armies and independent warlords who make a living from the drug trade. To produce a kilo of heroin requires vast areas of poppies and thousands of workers, and synthetic drugs are much easier. In practice, all you need are chemicals, expertise, and equipment. Methamphetamines are pure profit. If you buy a kilogram of meth in the Golden Triangle for $2,000 and manage to sell it, you make 200 to 400 grand in the US. That profit cannot be measured against anything else. In 2015, 
the Golden Triangle became the synthetic drug capital of the world. Seichi Lopez implemented a business model that proved irresistible to his customers. If one of his drug deliveries is intercepted by police, it is replaced at no additional cost, or the deposits are returned to the buyers. Ironically, it was this, shall we say, ethical approach that led the Australian police to identify him. The Sam Gore Syndicate is a trafficking organization for all sorts of drugs. A ton of amphetamine to Australia this week. Next week, half a ton of heroin to Japan, ecstasy pills to Southeast Asia, high-grade methamphetamine to Australia, the American Moto Gang, the Cosa Nostra, the Camorra, European criminal organizations, the Japanese Yakuza. Pablo Escobar and El Chapo Guzman have never seen profits like those of Tse Chi Lop and the company, reaching $60 billion. No international company can measure up to their annual revenues. The syndicate is extremely wealthy and far more disciplined and sophisticated than the Latin American drug cartels. They are also less prone to uncontrolled outbursts of domestic violence than Latinos. Money is so plentiful that animosities between Asian crime groups are buried deep. Tse Chi Lop doesn't lead a glamorous lifestyle like other drug lords. He doesn't drive a Ferrari, but he's also a big spender, especially when it comes to his personal security. His security consists of Thai kickboxers, who rotate in and out as part of his security protocol. Tse Chi Lop throws lavish birthday parties every year at resorts and five-star hotels, flying his family and entourage in private jets. He is also a frequent visitor to casinos in Asia and loves to bet on horses. He is reported to have lost 60 million euros in one night at the tables in Macau. In 2016, Seichi Lop has already established his drug empire. Then at the Yangon Airport in Burma, police stop and search a young Taiwanese man, Kai Zheng Zhe. They spot him nervously picking at his blister-covered hands. Methamphetamine is toxic and damages the skin. They find taped to his thighs small bags containing 80 grams of ketamine, a powerful party drug. The more important find is his phone, which contains heroin and synthetic drug supply lists, shipments captured by police details of money laundering operations, and even the passport of Tse Chi Lop himself, a key element linking him to drug trafficking. The most disturbing find on the young Taiwanese man's phone were several videos of people being tortured. One shows a man crying, tied up, and three torturers burning his legs with a gasoline lamp and electrocuting him. The tortured man claims he threw 300 kilograms of methamphetamine from a boat because he thought the fast approaching boat was the police. The torturers are checking the veracity of the claims. By filming and sharing such videos, Triad members send a message about how disloyalty is punished. In addition, Kai's phone has a huge photo and video gallery, social media conversations, and thousands of calls and text messages. With evidence linking Tsechi Lop to drug trafficking, he can now be charged, and global agencies from 20 countries are joining in a massive manhunt for him. Police have also identified the 19 most important figures in the company's leadership body. A major coordinated operation is underway in northern Thailand in 2019. The place is something like a fortified castle in the jungle. With an underground laboratory, drugs, equipment, cars, buildings are looted. They froze more than 30 Tse Chi Lop accounts with more than $3 million. Police seized $2 million worth of methamphetamines. This is the first big blow in the authorities' war against Tse Chi Lop. And from this point on, the clandestine laboratories in the Thai jungle are now operating under great pressure. The Burmese police are stepping up. In Australia and Indonesia, large quantities of drugs are being seized. The company's profits are gradually declining as Hechi Lop's becoming uncomfortable for many of its partners. His reputation begins to play against him and many doors close. Reuters comes out with a detailed article on Hechi Lop's company and his personality, with photos and cute illustrations. The title is, Asia's El Chapo. Thus, Tse was given media coverage and the other bigwigs in the drug business began to shun him. This article outright ruins his life. Meanwhile, Interpol have already put him on a red notice. Basically, traffickers are afraid of Interpol because when it catches up with them, the local police, even if is corrupt, can't turn a blind eye. In October 2020, 66-year-old Chunk Chak Lee, believed to be the right-hand man of Tse and the second man in the Sam Gore syndicate, was arrested in Bangkok. This tights the noose around Sechi Lop. He doesn't have many places to hide. The pressure is so intense he has no choice but to leave Asia. On the 22nd of January 2021, Taiwanese authorities tell him he must leave the country. He tries to board a plane for his second homeland, Canada, which is a desperate move because there is nowhere else for him to go. His plane has a stopover in Amsterdam, the Netherlands, where Interpol's red notice protocol has already been triggered and the police are on foot. After 15 years of slinking in the shadows, a criminal mastermind with billions in business has been arrested. The news goes around the globe. The biggest fish in the world of synthetic drugs has fallen into the net. 
For two years, his lawyers have been fighting to avoid extradition to Australia, claiming his arrest in Amsterdam was a dirty trick orchestrated by the authorities. They should have put him on a direct flight to Canada because he was a Canadian citizen, but they held him against his will in Amsterdam, where the extradition system was more convenient for them. Dutch law allows, if someone is extradited from there, that on arrival, further charges can be brought against them. So, in a way, they probably screwed him. On December 22, 2022, Tsai Chi Lop, who was 59 at that time, was extradited to Australia. This is one of the most important arrests in the history of Australian police. Apparently, the two years in the Dutch jail didn't do him much good, because he's visibly thinning out, and his hair, previously pitch black, is now quite grey. His closest associate, Chunk Chuck Lee, was extradited to Melbourne shortly before him, and will also be tried in Australia. The fact that these two drug lords will face trial is an undoubted success for the combined efforts of at least 20 agencies and special services. But in the meantime, experts say that while the arrests have seriously damaged the Samgor Syndicate's operations, it is still active in both production and drug trafficking. The evidence is in. Since Tse's arrest, seizures have been mounting and trafficking continues to grow. Who has replaced Tse Chilop as head of the company remains to be seen. If you want another monkey story, watch this video where you will learn about the moon landing, why some people think it's fake, and proof they are horribly wrong.